Book Thirteen, Chapters Twenty One through Twenty Nine. Chapter Twenty One. And thus, in thy word, it was not the depth of the sea, but the earth, separated from the brackishness of the water, that brought forth not the creeping and the flying creature that has life, but the living soul itself. And now this soul no longer has need of baptism, as the heathen had, or as it did when it was covered with the waters. And there can be no other entrance into the kingdom of heaven, since thou hast appointed that baptism should be the entrance." nor does it seek great miraculous works by which to buttress faith. For such a soul does not refuse to believe unless it sees signs and marvels, now that the faithful earth is separated from the waters of the sea, which have been made bitter by infidelity. Thus, for them, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to those who do not believe. And the earth, which thou hast founded above the waters, does not stand in need of those flying creatures which the waters brought forth at thy word. Send forth thy word into it by the agency of thy messengers. For we only tell of their works, but it is thou who dost the works in them, so that they may bring forth a living soul in the earth. The earth brings forth the living soul because the earth is the cause of such things being done by thy messengers just as the sea was the cause of the production of the creeping creatures having life and the flying fowl under the firmament of heaven the earth no longer needs them although it feeds on the fish which was taken out of the deep set out on that table which thou preparest in the presence of those who believe to this end he was raised from the deep that he might feed the dry land and the fowl, even though they were bred in the sea, will yet be multiplied on the earth. The preaching of the first evangelists was called forth by reason of man's infidelity, but the faithful also are exhorted and blessed by them in manifold ways, day by day. The living soul has its origin from the earth, because only to the faithful is there any profit in restraining themselves from the love of this world, so that their soul may live to thee. This soul was dead while it was living in pleasures, in pleasures that bear death in them, whereas thou, O Lord, art the living delight of the pure heart. Now, therefore, let thy ministers do their work on the earth, not as they did formerly in the waters of infidelity, when they had to preach and speak by miracles and mysteries and mystical expressions, in which ignorance, the mother of wonder, gives them an attentive ear because of its fear of occult and strange things. For this is the entry into faith for the sons of Adam who are forgetful of thee, who hide themselves from thy face, and who have become a darkened abyss. Instead, let thy ministers work, even as on the dry land, safe from the whirlpools of the abyss. Let them be an example unto the faithful by living, before them, and stirring them up to imitation. For in such a setting men will heed, not with the mere intent to hear, but also to act. Seek the Lord, and your soul shall live, and the earth may bring forth the living soul. Be not conformed to this world. Separate yourselves from it. The soul lives by avoiding those things which bring death if they are loved. Restrain yourselves from the unbridled wildness of pride, from the indolent passions of luxury, and from what is falsely called knowledge. Thus may the wild beast be tamed, the cattle subdued, and the serpent made harmless. For, in allegory, these figures are the motions of our mind, that is to say, the haughtiness of pride, the delight of lust, and the poison of curiosity are motions of the dead soul. Not so dead that it has lost all motion, but dead because it has deserted the fountain of life, and so has been taken up by this transitory world and conformed to it. But thy word, O God, is a fountain of life eternal, and it does not pass away. Therefore this desertion is restrained by thy word when it says to us, Be not conformed to this world, to the end that the earth may bring forth a living soul in the fountain of life, a soul disciplined by thy word, by thy evangelists, by the following of the followers of thy Christ. For this is the meaning of after his kind, a man tends to follow the example of his friend. Thus he, Paul, says, Become as I am, 
because I have become as you are. Thus in this living soul there shall be good beasts, acting meekly. For thou hast commanded this, saying, Do your work in meekness, and you shall be loved by all men. And the cattle will be good, for if they eat much they shall not suffer from satiety, and if they do not eat at all they will suffer no lack. And the serpents will be good, not poisonous to do harm, but only cunning in their watchfulness, exploring only as much of this temporal nature as is necessary in order that the eternal nature may be clearly seen, understood through the things that have been made. For all these animals will obey reason when, having been restrained from their death-dealing ways, they live and become good. Chapter 22 Thus, O Lord, our God, our Creator, when our affections have been turned from the love of the world, in which we died by living ill, and when we began to be a living soul by living well, and when the word be not conformed to this world, which thou didst speak through thy apostle, has been fulfilled in us, then will follow what thou didst immediately add, when thou saidst, But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This will not now be after their kind, as if we were following the neighbor who went before us, or as if we were living after the example of a better man. For thou didst not say, Let man be made after his own kind, but rather, Let us make man in our own image and our own likeness, so that then we may be able to prove what thy will is. This is why thy minister, begetting children by the gospel so that he might not always have them babes whom he would still have to feed with milk and nurse as children. This is why he said, Be transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Therefore thou didst not say, Let man be made, but rather, Let us make man. And thou didst not say, After his kind, but after our image and likeness. Indeed, it is only when man has been renewed in his mind, and comes to behold and apprehend thy truth, that he does not need another man as his director to show him how to imitate human examples. Instead, by thy guidance, he proves what is thy good and acceptable and perfect will. And thou dost teach him, now that he is able to understand, to see the trinity of the unity, and the unity of the trinity. This is why the statement in the plural, Let us make man, is also connected with the statement in the singular, And God made man. Thus it is said in the plural, After our likeness, and then in the singular, After the image of God. Man is thus transformed in the knowledge of God, according to the image of him who created him. And now, having been made spiritual, he judges all things, that is, all things that are appropriate to be judged, and he himself is judged of no man. Chapter 23 Now this phrase, he judges all things, means that man has dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over all cattle and wild beasts, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And he does this by the power of reason in his mind, by which he perceives the things of the Spirit of God. But when man was put in this high office, he did not understand what was involved, and thus was reduced to the level of the brute beasts, and made like them. Therefore, in thy church, O our God, by the grace thou hast given us, since we are thy workmanship, created in good works, not only those who are in spiritual authority, but also those who are spiritually subject to them. Thou madest man male and female. Here all are equal in thy spiritual grace, where, as far as sex is concerned, there is neither male nor female, just as there is neither Jew nor Greek, nor bond nor free. Spiritual men, therefore, whether those who are in authority or those who are subject to authority, judge spiritually. They do not judge by the light of that spiritual knowledge which shines in the firmament, for it is inappropriate for them to judge by so sublime an authority. Nor does it behoove them to judge concerning thy book itself, although there are some things in it which are not clear. Instead, 
we submit our understanding to it, and believe with certainty that what is hidden from our sight is still rightly and truly spoken. In this way, even though a man is now spiritual and renewed by the knowledge of God according to the image of him who created him, he must be a doer of the law rather than its judge. Neither does the spiritual man judge concerning that division between spiritual and carnal men, which is known to thy eyes, O God, and which may not as yet be made manifest to us by their external works, so that we may know them by their fruits. Yet thou, O God, knowest them already, and thou hast divided and called them secretly, before the firmament was made. Nor does a man, even though he is spiritual, judge the disordered state of society in this world. For what business of his is it to judge those who are without, since he cannot know which of them may later on come into the sweetness of thy grace, and which of them may continue in the perpetual bitterness of their impiety? Man, then, even if he was made after thy own image, did not receive the power of dominion over the lights of heaven, nor over the secret heaven, nor over the day and the night which thou callest forth before the creation of the heaven, nor over the gathering together of the water which is the sea. Instead, he received dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowls of the air, and over all cattle and all the earth, and over all creeping things which creep on the earth. Indeed, he judges and approves what he finds right, and disapproves what he finds amiss, whether in the celebration of those mysteries by which are initiated those whom thy mercy hast sought out in the midst of many waters, or in that sacrament in which is exhibited the fish itself, which, being raised from the depths, the pious earth feeds upon, or in the signs and symbols of words which are subject to the authority of thy book. Such signs as burst forth and sound from the mouth as if it were flying under the firmament, interpreting, expounding, discoursing, disputing, blessing, invoking thee, so that the people may answer, Amen. The reason that all these words have to be pronounced vocally is because of the abyss of this world and the blindness of our flesh in which thoughts cannot be seen directly, but have to be spoken aloud in our ears. Thus, although the flying fowl are multiplied on the earth, they still take their origins from the waters. The spiritual man also judges by approving what is right, and reproving what he finds amiss in the works and morals of the faithful, such as in their almsgiving, which is signified by the phrase, the earth bringing forth its fruit. And he judges of the living soul, which is then made to live by the disciplining of her affections in chastity, in fasting, in holy meditation. And he also judges concerning all those things which are perceived by the bodily senses. For it can be said that he should judge in all matters about which he also has the power of correction. Chapter 24 But what is this? What kind of mystery is this? Behold, O Lord, thou dost bless men in order that they may be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. In this art thou not making a sign to us that we may understand something allegorically? Why didst thou not also bless the light, which thou callest the day, nor the firmament of heaven, nor the lights, nor the stars, nor the earth, nor the sea? I might reply, O our God, that thou, in creating us after thy own image, I might reply that thou didst will to bestow this gift of blessing upon man alone, if thou hadst not similarly blessed the fishes and the whales, so that they too should be fruitful and multiply and replenish the waters of the sea, and also the fowls, so that they should be multiplied on the earth. In like fashion I might say that this blessing properly belonged only to such creatures as are propagated from their own kind if I could find it given also as a blessing to trees, and plants, and the beasts of the earth. But this increase and multiply was not said to plants, or trees, or beasts, or serpents, although all of these, along with fishes, and birds, and men, do actually increase by propagation, and so preserve their species. What, then, shall I say, O truth, O my life, that it was idly and vainly said? Surely not this, O father of piety! Far be it from a servant of thy word to say anything like this. 